welcome back to game two of Ohio versus Texas. In game one, Texas did take the W, and that is very big once again in this series, as Ohio's star player is their starting pitcher, Laurel O'Connor, who will now be out until at least game five. Going into this game, Ohio is now stuck with kind of their third and, or sorry, their second starting pitcher in Wally Vu. And if you look there on the right hand side, you'll see he's an extremely high in that junket accuracy bar. So we'll be seeing a lot of curve balls and sliders coming from him. He is only rated a C plus. He will be starting against Texas's Mateus Rocha. Mateus is a B pitcher. So Texas is actually going into this matchup with a starting pitcher advantage. In terms of batters and uh, scoring, the first game, if you missed it, started out as a banger in the first uh, two innings. I think it was four to four. And then it went kind of into a pitching duel and a low scoring game until the end there. But there are a lot of high hitters in this series, a lot of big power and contact. So let's go ahead, hop into game two. And we're back and something to call out right away since this is game two, you'll see some of those players already have their mojos higher or lower from their results in game one. So that's something else that could definitely play in as we get started here. Cher Low is gonna be starting us off against the Wally Vu. Important thing to note there, Wally Vu does have that BB Pro negative stat. So what that means is that if he reaches a three ball count, he will have some lower stats. And that was almost a home run to start the game there, but starts us out with a double. Aaron Sexton takes the plate. Grounder, it's a tough dive. Will he be able to get it? Nope. All right, we're looking at a start to a big first inning, just like we had in the first game. Let's see how this pans out. Andre McFarland, again, one of the best batters. Might actually be the best batter in this tournament. In the regular season, has the most hits and the highest batting average of anyone. This will be a big pitch. Ooh. One thing that we do need to watch out for there is you'll see uh, Aaron Sexton does have that speed there on first. And if a, if a pitcher throws too many times and the player is safe, it will drop their mojo. Slow grounder. This should result in double play here. Oh, he was safe at first. So the first run does come in. And they're only at one out. Ball has popped up. It looks to be going foul, and it does. It lands on top of the back. Grounder right up the middle to Perez in the center field. And we're looking at runners on first and second with only one out. Ronan Turtles, he is locked in. He had a 100% or I think he went four for four in the initial matchup. They are double stealing and it was dropped. That is huge. You have two players in scoring position here. Oh, wow, that BB prone. It caused a massive drop. I didn't realize that it caused that big of a stat adjustment. Oh, and now that lower mojo is going to play into this a lot. You'll see this. I mean, I realized in game one, Laurel O'Connor did not pitch as well as we would have expected. But you can see the difference between an S 
and a C pitcher here. Ohio needs to be very careful on this one in. Grounder, Dudley should be an easy out. There we go. Ohio got very lucky holding Texas in that inning the one run. Starting things up here for Ohio, we have Britt Dudley. That ball is popped up. Should be an easy first out here. Geronimo Fowler, again, one of the best players in this league in the regular season. He had a very good overall batty, and that ball is popped up. It is very high, but not far enough as an out, too. Duke Perez had a great first game, even though Ohio was not able to take the W. And... Fielding error there, but he keeps his situation alive. Rocha does not have a top of the line bar in any of the three major pitching stats. However, he's kind of got a middle bar across the field there, and that ball lands in the outfield. And Morse does not have a lot of speed or a great arm, it looks like. And that's going to go ahead and put them in. Let's, let's go take a quick look at her uh, bars there. So she only has a 47 speed, and she does have a 68 arm, but that was not looking good out there. Gwendolyn Flounder, great batter. We'll see if she can get something here, but she does strike out for out three. Very, very interesting how... Both games so far have had exciting scoring in first innings. Madison Morse actually had an exceptionally good game one while not having the best regular season. So we'll, sh we'll see if she can keep her game going here and does get that strike out. And Nella Stafford steps up to the plate. Did carry over a tense mojo from last game. And with those low bars, we'll see if she can get anything going. A strike two. Sorry, strike three. Out two is what I meant to say. Share low back up to the plate. Other thing to note here is Wally Vu is already at 44 pitches. That has popped up an easy third out by Fowler out there in right field. We had the same situation last game where those pitches got really high really early. So we'll see if uh, Rocha here can keep this with a lower pitch count. Oh, that is a fielding error again, but he is able to get over there. Helen Tucker, who's running that, has a 68 speed, so not the worst speed, just wasn't enough. Grounder to Turtles for an out two. Arlen Terry went one for four in the first game. Strike two. That's a little high, a little low, but he bought it. Very quick inning, too. 
Texas is stepping up with their three best batters for this inning. So we'll see how this pans out. Grounder, but it does go foul right outside of the first baseline. Strike two. And Sexton hits a foul ball there. Inside. Another inside, and that BB prone stat comes in here. That ball is popped, but it does go foul. If that had been a couple of feet more in field there, that would have been a home run. Big hit to left field there, and Gwendolyn Flounder does pick it up off the ground. So Aaron Sexton does start here on first base. Aaron Sexton, oh, a slow roller should be a double play here. Nope, not fast enough to turn them. I was going to say Aaron Sexton in the regular season did steal 18 times. Let's see. Oh, this is, this is uh, Andre McFarland, and he is safe. Andre McFarland in the regular season, he only had 15 stolen bases. So that is big, though, puts him in scoring position here. Up. It's not going to allow a run to come in, but it does take McFarland there to third base. Ronan Turtles, again, he has that higher mojo and so far has done exceptionally well in this series. And they're going to steal. Let's see what happens here. That results in out two. Slow rounder to first should close out the inning. Ooh, another inning there that was very close to being very bad. Pedro underhanded to start us out here. A reminder, he is the catcher and probably one of the worst batters in this series. Slow grounder to turn us at shortstop. Oh, and low drops the pass. All right. I can't imagine underhand that we'll go for a steal. So something that Rocha probably doesn't need to worry about. Ooh, that went in. Did that hit the batter? I don't see her running, so I don't think it did. But that did result... It's going to make it to second, and that's going to hit the gap. That's going to bring home a run. A run and a... Is that going to end in a triple? Wow. That is big. Geronimo Fowler. Looking for a big hit. Slow grounder. That ball bounced, and we're now stuck in a rundown here. Oh, man. Back and forth, back and forth, and it, she does get out. Duke Perez. Again, so far the MVP of this series. We're only on game two. See if he can keep it up. That ball is popped, and that's looking to be a home run. It is into the double decker. Wow. Duke Perez just keeps things going here for this team. Absolutely incredible first two games from him. Puts Ohio up 4 to 1. It's looking like another nicely hit ball. Will only result in a single now. Gwendolyn Flounder. Always somebody that is going to be top of mind whenever she's up to bat. 
could result in a number of different outcomes here. Oh, she saw that one coming. Almost the exact same pitch, it's another foul. That ball is popped up. Three out there, and it looks like Turtles comes all the way from shortstop to get that out. Helen Tucker, see if she can get anything going here. Pitch right down the middle, and that was a relatively slow pitch. Helen Tucker is sitting with two strikes. Ball gets popped up, and that's on top of the dug. Actually, that's in the dugout. That was very close. Another pop up on that side. Full count, two outs here. Ball bounces. Turtles would probably get that easy out. We're going into the fourth. Ohio did take three runs in the third inning there. So we'll see if Texas can come back. Texas is one of the best batting teams, so you can never count them out. That is popped. That is looking like it could be out. It is! That is out just hugging the line there. And over the top, that is Farley. Let me take a quick look here. Farley in the regular season only had one home run, but that is a huge home run for them. Grounder to Terry at first base for the first out. Madison Moore stepping up to the plate here. Wally Vu is at 66 pitches. At the top of the fourth, so we'll see how long he can remain in there. Again, Ohio does have basically a better uh, relief pitching core than starting even with Laurel O'Connor there. So we'll see how long they choose to keep Wally Vu in. Foul ball in their first base. Grounder. Considered a fair ball. Looks like it might have been a little bit out, but it is what it is. That is going to wrap up the top of the fourth. Ohio really does not want to go down in this series 2-0. So I'm sure that we're going to see them do whatever they can to get us to a 1-1 one -one series. Them locking in at least one win puts Laura O'Connor back on the map for them, which again will be huge. Fast rounder to Turtles. Turtles so far in this series has... Done an exceptionally good job there at shortstop. Ball is popped up. It is caught by McFarland. Pedro underhanded. Stepping up to the plate. Rocha is also getting close to that. 70 pitch count. He's actually at 71 right now. Now, Texas does not have as good of a uh, relief pitching core, so again, it'll be interesting to see how long they're able to keep these two starting pitchers in. And Texas does have the top of their batting order coming up here, so this will be a big inning. They're going to have Wally Vu once again getting tired out, and their best batter's up. Cher Lowe starts things off here by getting a walk. Which puts somebody on base for Aaron Sexton here.
Aaron Sexton swings inside. Hits the ground. That accuracy bar just dropped. And a second batter walked. They probably need to pull Lou here. Especially with Andre McFarland up, but they're going to keep him in. I think that might be an error here, but we'll see how it pans out. Put it under. Andrew McFarland has not had a great uh, two games here so far, but one of the best players. And that should have been a double play. But. See how this pans out. Alexandria Tannen. Oh, another, another error down there, and this it involves Wally Vu also having some problems with his accuracy. He does not want to get the bases loaded, and that's exactly what he got. Ronan Turtles stepping up. Ronan Turtles has had a great series so far. And they switch out pitchers now for Clowners. Ball is popped up. Out two, and they're not able to tag in. Clowners is a B minus relief pitcher with a high bar in that junk and accuracy fields. Foul ball. Barley hits a bomb. Let's see if that goes out. It does! Just out over the wall for a grand slam. I think that's his second home run of the day. It is. Oh man, Farley. That is the exact type of player that could be making a name for himself in this tournament. Again, just in this game, he had more home runs at two than he did all of the 80 game season. That ball has popped up. We see the fielder hugging the wall. Is that gonna be out? <laughs> it is! Oh, so many of these home runs in this game have just gone over the wall. And that is now first home run of the series. And that is did have six home runs in the regular season. And he is their designated hitter, so you would expect a, you know, a little bit more. And the Clowners is showing with that rattled mojo. You can see her bars are dropped about 50% from that. She needs to get a strike out here and get out of this inning. Oh, tough dive. In Texas, this is the way the Texas is going to play this tournament. They are going to go for these big scoring games. That goes foul. Clowners is able to get the third strikeout, but that was a disastrous inning for Ohio. Again, Ohio needs to keep themselves in this matchup, in this series. Rocha still is, he's currently at 75 pitches, so he could definitely get through this inning and help out their relief pitchers moving forward. Rick Dudley does swing at that. That looks like high. Geronimo Fowler stepping up. He knows his position on this team. He knows that this team is going to need him to either hit a home run or at least get on base here. Running turtles again. Quick out. Duke Perez. The player that's keeping Ohio in this series so far up to the plate. 
Strings of that, that was definitely inside. Strength two. Just, well, just outside the strike zone. And he gets him to bite. That is big. Rocha had a very big inning there. That was three of the best batters on that team. Share low. Steps up. I would not be surprised if we saw Clowners pulled, especially if this inning starts with a player on base. Quick out one. Aaron Sexton. Again, Ohio does not want to allow another home run or another big inning here. That ball, oh, that almost went fair. Oh, for some reason, Clowners has got multiple players here to fight on some pretty bad pitches. Andre McFarland is a player that Texas relied on in the regular season, and he has not performed so far through these first two games, but the Texas team is a team game for a reason. Balls ground it, Dudley. Oh, she's not able to get it over in time. Now, McFarland does have exceptional speed. He has an 81 speed bar. So, the other thing we'll have to keep an eye on here is if he steals. Oh. Oh! That was unexpected, especially with the McFarland speed bar there. I was not expecting him to get caught there. But, we're going in to the bottom of the sixth. Ohio is still down three. Rocha is able to get another strikeout. It would not surprise me if Rocha gets pulled here, especially against Gwendolyn Salander. And that's exactly when they bring in their backup. Velasquez. He once again, we have a bunch of these curveball pitchers coming in this game. Beautiful pitch there. Another good one. He does have that K dud. He'll drop his velocity. He's able to get a second out. Hit the batter there. That ball does land and we get a single. Two outs, but we'll see what comes of this here. Mac Bush has taken the plate. Mac Bush, not a player that has played well so far. In the regular season, he did have a 0.312 batting average, but you can see right there, his games have continued with very little movement. Sandria Tannen stepping up to the plate, and here we're going to see Ohio switch out pitchers for Nelly Stout. Nelly Stout is also a B-minus relief pitcher for them. And he actually comes in here with extreme velocity, but does not have great accuracy. So we'll see how those two pan out. Underhanded to carry there for a quick out one. Oof. Tough 
Walker with help. Our leader has had a great game. Those are examples of where that accuracy comes in, but he does get the strikeout. Ohio's going to have three innings here to try to make up these three runs. Getting at least one here would be huge for them. Um, Terry is going to start them off. That is popped up. It looks like it's going to be caught, though, by Farley there in center field. Pedro underhanded. So far is yet to get a hit in this series. All goes foul. Well, that is knocked down and they are able to get the quick out. Pal was able to get over there for that assist. Dudley swings hard on that one. That is popped up. Will that remain fair? It does not. Would have hit the top of the wall either way. And she does take the strike three. Texas is going to look to extend their lead here. The three run lead is hard to come by. So we'll see what they're going to do here. Dudley over to Terry. And the pitcher just got an upgrade at Mojo there. He's now considered locked in and we'll see those bars a little bit higher. Not too helpful on the uh, you know, velocity and junk bars, but that small increase in accuracy could make a huge difference as they try to keep themselves in this game. Nelly Stout in the regular season is a pretty decent pitcher for them. That looks like it's gonna land. Oh, Guillermo Fowler! Or, sorry, not uh, Geronimo Fowler with that ca diving catch. That was beautiful. Going foul. And strike three. Very quick inning there for Nelly Stout. Nelly Stout in the regular season went four wins to three losses as a relief pitcher with a 3.99 ERA. We're back here with the core of Ohio's batting strength, so we'll see if they're able to get something going here. This will be the inning that's going to be easier for them to get something going. That's going to land in the field, and that could definitely get a double here. It looks like Morse missed the pickup there, and it's actually going to result in a triple to start things off. That is bad for Texas. That is the second time that a ball has landed out that way. Uh, Pretty sure that that happened in the first inning or two. Duke Perez up to bat. Definitely somebody that's going to be a little bit scary here. That ball is popped up. It's going to be caught, but probably will bring in the tag. It's going to be close. But he gets in. It's now down to a two-run game with Gross at the plate. Two strikes, but does add that K-dud. 
trait. That ball is hit and is caught by Morris. Gwendolyn Flounder stepping up to the plate. Starts things out here with two strengths. Outside pitch. And she bites on that high pitch. Texas, going into the top of the ninth, does have a two-run lead. And they are at the top of their batting order. We will see what comes of this. Here Lowe starts things off. That is looking like it. I thought I was going to hit the wall. But nope, uh, Gwendolyn Flounder out there was able to get a quick first out. And Sexton is now stepping up. He also hits one out that way, but that one's going to go foul. Another inside pitch. And at least that walks Aaron Sexton, which is... Always scary. I think he's made it onto base multiple times, even though he hasn't. I think he had walked at least one other inning here in this game. Andre McFarland. That is what you have to be worried about with him. That is out of here. Hits the double decker on the outside, and Andre McFarland gets them exactly what he was getting them in the regular season. That is huge for Texas. I'm going to be honest with that home run. I think Texas just locked this in at a 2-0 to series. And Texas keeps things rolling with another player on first. Ohio is going to need to step in. We'll probably see some uh, pitch hitters come in as they're going to need a huge ninth inning to not go down 2-0 in this series. Ball is popped up and does go foul. The ball is hit, Max Bush, one out, and a safe. I think that's the third time that you would see something that might be a double play. And so far, they have not been able to have any of them go their way. Ball is grounded. Tucker should be able to get that third out at first, and that's exactly what happens. Going into the bottom of the ninth, Ohio is down four. They are in kind of the weak part of their batting lineup. They are going to need something here. Texas brings in relief pitcher Bingo Drake to hopefully close this out for them. Ball is grounded to low. And, oh, that is not how you want to start things. That not only gets a player on first, that also dropped Bingo Drake's mojo. That's going to be a little bit scary now. Two balls, one strike. That ball is hit and grounded up the middle. Farley throws it to Turtles. And we're looking at a player on first and second. We'll see if Marlon Terry can get anything going here. The net three balls, one strike. Full count. He is able to strike out Marlon Terry. Pedro underhand it. So far, not a single hit in this series, and he's coming in at a huge time. He gets the hit, and it is going to land in the gap. This will drive him at least one run. It brings in one run. And we're looking at something on third and first. And now Ohio does have the top of their batting order. Rick Dudley. Two 
Two strikes, two balls. Ball ball. Ball ball. The ball is hit and does not result in a double play, which gives here Geronimo Fowler the ability to make something happen. He gets the grounder. That's going to bring in one more run. And we're now looking at a two-point game. Two outs, and look who is stepping up to the plate. It is Duke Perez. You could not make up this script. Let's see how this plays out. I think it starts with two balls. Oh, and that ball gets hit directly below at first. And Texas is able to bring in game two of the series. This is big for Texas. Texas was definitely the underdog of this tournament. And they are giving the top seed of this tournament a run for things in this first round. Let's take a look here at the box score. That was a great and exciting game. A lot of hits, a lot of back and forth, and it almost come back there at the end by Ohio. That was a lot closer than I was expecting that ninth inning to uh, become. Let's take a look here, see what the game would likely give to the MVP. I think Farley is an obvious answer with his two home runs, five RBIs. But let's see if there's anything else here. Let's go look at how the pitchers did. No pitcher did all that well. So yeah, I think that this game's MVP is going to end up going to Farley of Texas. Let's see. Yep, Orlando Farley does get MVP of this game. Duke Perez, if he had hit that uh, like home run or even something to the outfield there, that would have been a crazy end to this game. But Texas takes it up 2-0, to zero, and we're going to see how this plays out in Game 3. As a reminder, this is a best of seven. Going into game three, Texas up 2-0. I'm excited. I feel like we're starting to get to know some of the players on these teams. We'll see how they progress through the tournament. If you stuck it out to the end, thank you so much. I'll be seeing you guys for Ohio versus Texas, game three.